Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 146 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of a patient with three-vessel CTO who had multiple complications through the procedure. The patient was a woman with a recurrent non-ST elevation myocardial infarctions, ischemic cardiomyopathy with an injection fraction of 25% and diabetes, she was turned down for coronary bypass and referred for PCI. This is her coronary angiogram, demonstrating severe multivessel coronary disease. There is significant disease in the distal left main, a CTO in the mid LAD. There is also a CTO in the mid circumflex with a distal vessel filling through epicardial collaterals. There are septal collaterals supplying the PDA. And there is a CTO of the right coronary artery with a marginal branch supplying the distal circumflex. The case is presented as a series of questions, the first one of which is about the next step. Should it be PCI of the LAD, the circumflex, the right coronary artery, or a viability study? And the answer here is a viability study, because in patients like this with low ejection fraction and previous myocardial infarctions, it's important to first establish the viability of a myocardial territory before proceeding with coronary vascularization, whether this is done with PCI or with coronary bypass craft surgery. So the patient underwent a cardiac MRI, which actually showed viability in all three coronary artery myocardial territories uh, with some uh, damage, uh, mainly on the anterior and apical wall. The decision was made to first uh, tackle the circumflex CTO and the question is, uh, which uh, descriptor of the lesion is incorrect? A, the blunt proximal cap, B, 60 millimeter length, C, bifurcation of the distal cap, and D, presence of epicardial collaterals. And the answer here is uh, B, the lesion does have a blunt cap at the bifurcation of a large obtuse marginal branch. However, it is not long, it's actually a short CTO and there is a bifurcation also at the distal cap, and the circumflex does fill through epicardial collaterals. And these are the four key characteristics of uh, angiographic review of CTOs, the proximal cap, which was blunt in our case, the lesion length, about 20 millimeters in our case, and the quality of the distal vessel, which was good in our case, but there was a bifurcation of the distal cap. In terms of collaterals, there were epicardial collaterals. The next question is whether hemodynamic support should be used in this patient with severe multivessel disease and low ejection fraction. And one way to make this decision is by doing a right heart catheterization. The red is the pulmonary artery pressure tracing and the wedge pressure was normal. Therefore, a decision was made to not go with upfront prophylactic hemodynamic support. However, given the comorbidities and um, uh, low ejection fraction, it was decided to have VA ECMO as standby for the procedure. Next question is about uh, the approach to this mid-circumflex CTO. What is wrong with the current illustrated approach? First, poor guide selection. This is an EBU375 guide. Second, no use of a guide catheter extension. Third, wire extension, it was a filter XTA. Fourth, lack of a guide wire. And fifth, uh, microcaster selection, which was a turnpike spiral. And the answer here is lack of guide wire. The problem is not with selection of guide, which is a great supportive guide. Eight friends, EBU375 is a great guide for left sided CTOs. Microcaster is a standard microcaster for CTOs, turnpike spiral. So is the guide wire. Typically, a polymer jacketed tapered guide wire is the first choice for undergrade wire escalation. However, we do have a bifurcation of the proximal cap in this CTO. And some of the challenges when the bifurcation is at the proximal cap is that the guide wire may go into the side branch, number one. And number two, if the guide wire goes actually into the CTO, it's a possible that um, there will be some plaque C for injury and some compromise of the side branch, which can create adverse consequences. There are many different strategies for tackling a bifurcation of the proximal cap, but the hallmark of all of those should be to insert a safety wire into the, safety, into the side branch. 
By doing that, then one can potentially inflate a balloon there to deflect the wire and direct it into the CTO. Or a dual lumen microcatheter can be used to penetrate uh, into the CTO. So wire escalation was done with the filter XTA and then the hemodynamics changed. We can see significant hypotension with the systolic pressure in the 70s and an increase in the pulmonary artery pressure. So should we use hemodynamic support now? And the answer is yes. I mean, we have a patient who is severely hypotensive with increased uh, PA pressures. Clearly something wrong happened and given the low reserve, hemodynamic support is indicated. And that something that happened was an occlusion of the first obtuse marginal branch. We did not have a safety wire there and then during attempts to wire there was a dissection and the dissection compromised the flow and given the patient's limited reserve there was hemodynamic decompensation. We had fortunately planned for this. We had VA ECMO with perfusionist in the room so the patient went on VA ECMO immediately and uh, the hemodynamics subsequently stabilized. Next question is whether you can make things worse with CTOPCI. And obviously, as this case illustrates, absolutely can. Here we have an example of an acute vessel closure due to dissection that compromised one of the non-CTO branches and uh, led to hemodynamic compromise requiring need for hemodynamic support. An acute vessel closure is one of the three major coronary complications, the other two being perforation and equipment loss and entrapment. So we're still left with this patient in whom flow into this um, branch has been compromised. Now the hemodynamics are stabilized on ECMO, but what should be the next step? Stop the procedure, send for emergency bypass, give a 2B3 inhibitor, or attempt wiring of the first obtuse marginal branch. Stopping the procedure is an option, but still we have compromise in this branch, which is not going to be good in the short or long term. Therefore, at least one attempt to open it is reasonable. Emergency cabbage, not a good option. The patient had already been turned down for coronary bypass graft due to prohibited risk, and that risk obviously will be even higher now in an emergent setting with antiplatelets and anticoagulants reward. Third, to B3 inhibitors, that is sometimes given for cases of dissection. However, in this case, given the ECMO, the large size, large size cannulas used, would uh, create a significant risk of bleeding. So what we decided to do here is to attempt uh, wiring with an obtuse of the obtuse marginal branch. And the next question is how do you wire through a dissection plane? Optimal wire is A, C on blue, B, pilot 200, C, C on black, D, Gaia second, and E, Hornet 14. And in our opinion, the correct answer here is a workhorse wire, C on blue, workhorse, non-hydrophilic guide wire. The reason being that the polymer jacketed wires are quite likely to follow the dissection path and the stiff wires should not be the first choice because they can potentially worsen the dissection. So in this case, a Sion Blue workhorse wire was advanced to the obtuse marginal branch and uh, after balloon inflation, the flow was restored and actually the patient hemodynamics significantly improved with normal blood pressure and the PA pressure significantly decreased. Of course, the patient was on ECMO. We can see here the top of the venous cannula. The true lumen position was confirmed with intravascular ultrasound that shows that when true lumen, here is the proximal cap. With um, plaque, there is some area of calcification. What should be the next step now? One is, again, to stop the procedure. Second, to continue the crossing attempts of the circumflex. The third is to stand uh, the OM and go to the right. And the fourth is to stand the OM and go to the LAD. And again, there is no right or wrong. But the concern here was that if the circumflex was stented, the chance of being able to cross the circumflex CTO would decrease in the future. So the plan was to make an attempt to cross into the circumflex CTO as was the original plan. One way to do this is to get a dual lumen microcatheter. So in this case, we do have a twin pass torque through which uh, a pilot 200 
and a Gaia second were advanced in the course of the obtuse marginal branch. This is the ipsilateral injection showing that the uh, guide wire is uh, dancing along the vessel, so that's a positive sign. However, it is not within the distal trilumen. So this wire is in the subintimal space. So the next step here, could it be parallel wire, stingray, retrograde through the right coronary or 2M? And uh, both the first and second option are good. However, we decided in our case to try with stingray reentry. This is a knuckled filled XT guide wire. And then we used a Miracle 6 to deliver the stingray balloon. Delivery was challenging and there was some guide wire movement. And what happened next is seeing this issue in the course of the Miracle 6 guide wire. So what should be the next step here? One is retrograde to the right, second parallel wire, third Carlino, D intravascular ultrasounds and E balloon. And what we're seeing here is a perforation. We have a wire perforation with a Miracle 6 with extravasation. Therefore, the first step in every perforation is to inflate a balloon proximally to minimize uh, blood exit into the pericardium. This is the algorithm for coronary perforations. Once again, the first step is to inflate a balloon to occlude the vessel, fluids. The patient here was on ECMO. Pericardiocentesis, if hypotension develops, call the surgeons in case surgery is needed to evacuate the hematoma and stop the bleeding. And then, in this case, um, it was a distal vessel, it was a wire caused perforation. It's usually treated with embolization or cover stent over the perforated branch origin. Balloon inflation was done, however, after 10 minutes passed, there is still continued extravasation along the course of that guide wire. What to do next? What was done is kept the balloon up to prevent bleeding into the pericardium. At the same time, a second wire was advanced around uh, the inflated balloon, followed by insertion of the stingray balloon, this time along the course of the vessel. And then multiple attempts were done to re-enter into the distal trilumen using the stingray, but those were unsuccessful. A brief attempt was done for retrograde crossing. This is a PCI of the first diagonal to attempt retrograde crossing. However, uh, it was not possible to cross this epicardial collateral and uh, go into the obtuse marginal branch or the circumflex. The field XT was knuckled again and this time it went into the second obtuse marginal branch instead of the distal circumflex. The microcatheter was used, followed by a switch for the stingray wire. We can see now there's still hematoma, but the bleeding rate seems to have significantly decreased. The contrast staining seems to be staying in the same location. Using the double blind stick and swap with a Gaia third to stick and a Pilot 200 to swap, there was successful re-entry into the distal trilumen. Microcatheter was advanced and then uh, a Sion blue guide wire was inserted into the second obtuse marginal branch, followed by standing of um, the OM and the circumflex. We actually jailed the origin of the first obtuse marginal branch, but he had a wire in. And um, there was uh, no significant pericardial effusion. And at the end, we did have flow into the second obtuse marginal. This is obviously not the ideal result. Ideally, we should have flow into the circumflex as well. However, given all the challenges we've had and um, contrast, uh, radiation and time, the plan was to stop the case at this point and reassess. The patient did have a complicated post-procedural course with uh, ischemia in the leg requiring fasciotomy, but eventually was discharged and actually significantly improved without uh, significant shortness of breath or chest pain in the follow-up. And the plan, given everything that had happened, was to continue with medical therapy and reassess uh, down the line. So several lessons from this case. The first one is the importance of preparation and collaboration. In this case, we knew that the patient had low ejection fraction, complex anatomy, and was highly tenuous. 
and as a result with her plan to have um, either prophylactic or standby hemodynamic support. Based on the right heart cath, we did not start with hemodynamic support. However, when the need arose after the acute closure of the first obtuse marginal branch, the ECMO was ready and quickly stabilized the patient. Another lesson is the importance of protecting the side branch when there is a bifurcation at the proximal cap of the CTO. In this case, we did not, and that resulted in acute vessel closure and hemodynamic compromise. So a guide wire should always be in this uh, side branch to prevent uh, acute closure, and if there is a problem, allow access to the vessel to treat it, to treat it easily. And finally, we did have uh, another complication here, which was perforation, and the way this perforation was treated was by creating a dissection plane around the area of perforation using a knuckle guide wire and then re-entering more distally and standing in a way the dissection planes were pushed against the side of the perforation successfully sealing the perforation. Thank you.